So hello and welcome along to another edition of Isolation Interviews for Hospital Radio and for my YouTube channel. And I am super excited to be joined by a very talented lady in the form of Kate Robbins. Thank you for joining me, Kate. Hello, Matthew. I'm very, very pleased to be doing this. And I mean, how, how are you? I mean, how, how, are, how is life in, in another lockdown? Well, you know, I mean, it's just a bit boring. Um, I've been lucky that I've done some TV shows and I've done... Um, What's the one I'm on at the moment? House of Games, and I've done The Cube with my daughter. And if I hadn't done those television shows, honestly, I would have been very bored because all the live work that I normally do, you know, cabarets and touring and all that, of course, it's all stopped. Um, I can't moan because I'm healthy and well. But, you know, I do do pray for when theatres are reopened and when people can go out for a meal again and for a drink and, you know... The, the, the job that I love doing, which is entertaining people, I can't do it just, well, I can do it like this with you, Matthew, but uh, it is hard. It is hard for entertainers at the moment. Now, obviously, back in March was when it all kind of completely went, oh. you know, the, the whole world went sideways. Um, for you in the it's early days, yeah, for you in, your, in the early days, how did you find the kind of everyone was just at home doing nothing? I mean, how was that? And were you kind of learning new skills? Did you find yourself getting up to new things? Well, it was the lovely weather, wasn't it? So I was reading in the garden most days and I enjoyed that. That was nice. It was peaceful with the birds singing and, and the weather was beautiful. So you didn't mind it quite as much. And also there was a phase in the summer when we were allowed to meet up with a few friends for drinks, weren't we? Um, it was like the middle section. We were allowed to meet, I think, a few people. Yeah, I think so, it was sort of July, August time was when yes, it sort of, and, kind and of got so a little bit more normal. Yeah, and then we all went a bit mad and enjoyed that too much. And then, of course, it all comes crashing back down again. So, oh, I don't know. Um, I, I paint. That's my thing. I love art, art and drawing and painting. So I was doing a lot of that, a lot of breathing, a lot of playing my piano. So that's what I do. <laughs> and I mean, obviously, it does give us a newfound respect for the NHS and the amazing healthcare oh, workers and key workers out there. So, I mean, what, what have you kind of come to realise about, you know, the, the amazing people that are still working hard? Well, I mean, you just I mean, when we all used to stand there and clap for the carers, it, it you know, I think we all literally we wanted to do that because we cared so much and we st shouldn't stop thinking about them just because we're not clapping for them every day. Friday or whatever um they're just incredible aren't they you know I mean I've got members of my family who have been in and out of hospital not with Covid but with other things throughout this time and they've all said that it's been amazingly fast and efficient and I just think we've got the best in the world I really do and I think also, you know, before this all kicked off, I think a lot of people were maybe getting a little bit complacent or maybe kind of f taking taking the NHS for granted. But I think this has now brought them back oh. to the forefront and, you know, shows that people wow. do care about the amazing stuff they're doing. Absolutely. And even the Prime Minister, um, Mr Johnson, I won't call him Boris like everyone does, but, you know, even he sort of ended up in an NHS hospital and, you know, somebody as, as posh as him, you'd think he'd go private, wouldn't you? Um, but no, it just shows you that, you know, um, the NHS is there for everybody and um, we must, must, must keep it as it is. You know, it's, it's, it must never be privatised. <laughs> now, obviously, with, you know, the amazing career you've had, you've had, you, you know, one, the, the thing you do so well is entertain the nation. And I mean, for you, how did you become interested? Where, where, where did the interest in acting and in, you know, impressions come showing from? Off. <laughs> <laughs> showing off. Showing off, basically. Well, I started out as a singer songwriter and you know I wrote um, some songs and I got one song away which was did work very, very well and that was for Scylla Black which was surprise surprise and then I realized that um, I could do impressions and so I ended up getting booked to do impressions on adverts you know I'd be doing Joanna Lumley's voice saying oh absolutely fabulous sweetie or whatever you know and um, I found that I could do these voices and um, it I, and then a producer said, would you want to do them in a show? So this was after my singing career. So my career has been weird. I started off in Eurovision. I've done everything a bit naff, really. I did Eurovision and then I did Crossroads, which is a, a terrible soap opera. Well, it wasn't terrible. It was just, it was a bit rushed. The actors were good, but it was just a bit rushed. And then after Crossroads, I, I had a hit record and then I went into impressions and I, then I got my own TV series. And so 
and then I started having children when I was married and so I I started doing impressions just so you just heard me and that was spitting image and that was great I did 10 years of that and um you know people had never seen puppets like it I mean it was you know I started doing the Queen's voice saying well Philippe come and walk the court here's with me will you Philippe come on Philippe and um and when I met Princess Anne uh she said what do you do and I was at a charity thing for save the children and she asked me what I did and I wanted to say I do you ma'am <laughs> but I chickened out I chickened out and um she said oh you can't do me on switching image your nose isn't big enough <laughs> Um, she was she had a good sense of humor actually so um, I did spitting image for all those years and you know I've just really rolled along and then I did my one woman show at Edinburgh and then I did dinner ladies with um, Victoria Wood and became a good friend of Victoria's still miss her today can't believe she's not with us and after dinner ladies I, I've done everything really. I've done a bit of everything I, honestly I've done an awful lot but I, I never anything for that long <laughs> Well, that's, the thing, I, that, that's the thing with dinner ladies i mean i was um catching up on that recently and i, I mean i didn't because re- you, you imagine it ran for a while but it was only two series from from memory and and it was just it although it was quite a short series that the the nation yeah. took it to their to their hearts and amazing characters i mean obviously uh, you know julie walters um you yeah. know just amazing cast so it must have been oh. nice to be a part of that show it was wonderful i didn't have to audition she just asked me she just said she just called my agent my agent just said victoria would want you to be in a, in a sitcom about dinner ladies i went yes please and i just knew it would be brilliant you know and i play the gormless babs and I come from ermston and you know when i go to um my family i've got family who live in ermston um and macclesfield around there <laughs> and um you know i do feel sorry for the people who live in ermston who have been laden with this sort of <laughs> <laughs> with this terrible character going, I come from Herbston. <laughs> That's all she ever said, really. But um, no, it was great to work with her. And then I did um, a few projects with her as well. We did some documentaries about dieting. And we played, um, we both dressed up as women in the Second World War, digging for victory. And that was fun. Um, but just working with Victoria was just fantastic. And when I took my show up to Edinburgh, I sort of did a little tribute to her this was before she passed away. And I did... Um, her singing Bond themes, you know, Victoria Wood sings Bond themes as she would sing them, you know, diamonds are forever. Oh, they stimulate and tease me, you know, in her sort of voice. And I did it at the piano and um, I think she liked it. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's something that people always sort of refer to. Um, I, when I do an impression, I like to do something a bit different with it, not just do the voice. I like to do something a, a bit different. So that's good fun. It must also be great to see Emily doing such amazing work because obviously she kind of has, she, she's able to kind of do, you know, these amazing voices and she just, she, yeah. she's, she's so multi-talented. I mean, obviously came to fame in the Inbetweeners, obviously did the Jungle yeah. as well. You must be so proud of what she's doing at the moment. Very proud of her. And I think I said to her, don't get labelled with just doing impressions because it's hard to get cast in anything else if you're just doing impressions you know it took me years to get out of the impressionist bag and go into dramas and you know do do things like hobby city and you know casualty and all those sort of programs but um i did say to her don't get labeled with just doing impressions and she she never would she's she's an all-rounder as well i mean emily's a very talented girl um she's quite pretty as well and i think that I think the two things sometimes um, can be a burden, I think, for her, because you get taken a bit less seriously when you look like her. Do you know what I mean? I think people think of her as a poster girl, but actually there's so much more to her than that. So and she, she's, pro- she's proved that, I mean, you know, you do get a lot of these people who are kind of run of the mill. They're just kind of very generic, but she is multi-talented. She can do many different things. Um, she, you know, she, she knows what she's doing. And, and I think the great thing as well is that it, you know, her career, she knows exactly what she wants to do with it. And she's not letting anyone tell her what to do. She's, it's her own journey. Emily knows, Emily knows, and you can't really tell her. Although she does, she watches some of my old programs from the 80s when I do, used to do sketch shows with impressions and dancing and singing and she she does quote I mean I can quote her as saying she was quite inspired by watching those and I think 
you know, she likes to do a bit of everything. So um, I think she's having a ball on Celebrity Juice. It's a very rude program. You can't watch <laughs> it. It's too naughty. But yeah. Um, yeah, she's having a great time. She's young and she's she's enjoying life, you know, as, Would... as are all my kids. I've got three kids and Martha looks after her career. She's an agent. And my son, George, who um, he, he was in television. He used to work as a researcher. He got fed up of it all and he's now a landscape gardener and he loves wow. it. <laughs> Now, I mean, would you ever, would you ever, you know, follow in Emily's footsteps and go into the jungle? Is that a program we'd ever see you uh, in the in the castle now, as it is? Well, we'll have to see if they ask me. I mean, you know, <laughs> um, I do anything like that. I, I'm up for a good laugh and a challenge. I do like a challenge, and I think it's good to be put outside of your comfort zone sometimes. You know, um, yeah, I think uh, I think I would if they asked me, <laughs> but I don't think they're going to ask me. <laughs> And I mean, in terms of your career, we've said you've had an amazing career. Is there a highlight for you of what something you've done that's just been extra special has meant more to you? That's a really difficult question. Highlight. Um, I actually loved touring in the, the show Club Tropicana a couple of years ago, just before, before COVID. And I loved that because I'd never been in a musical, you know, a proper musical. And I played the Spanish cleaning lady and I didn't have to look nice on stage. And I wore a uniform and I had a mop, but I loved that feeling at the end of the night when you're standing there. I don't think there was ever a night when we didn't get a standing ovation. There was never. And I did that for, I don't know, six months, nine months. And I think that was, that was probably my happiest time. Touring, being with people, going for drinks afterwards oh just oh i long to get back to that world <laughs> <laughs> and i imagine as well you get to see all parts of the country maybe parts that you haven't seen in the past so it must yeah. be nice to get out there and see the, yeah. you know the, the world the country we live in there, there isn't um a city i've not been to i mean people say have you been to so and so I go oh yeah the so and so theater there you know it, you've been everywhere um in, in, in the only place and now we did go to southern ireland we're in northern ireland southern ireland Scotland, yeah, Wales. I mean, everywhere, absolutely everywhere. It was brilliant. And, and I think that touring like that, it is quite hard work doing this matinee on a Saturday afternoon, you know, when you, and then having to do another show straight after it. When you're getting on a bit like I am, it is quite hard work. But, um, you know, it was great fun. And I, I'd love to do that again. And I imagine as well, it's nice to get out there and see the audiences, see your fans who, who you know, love to, to, to you know, they, they can be so vocal. They can, you know, you get that instant reaction from them. Well, I inherited a lot of Joe McKeldry's, <laughs> Joe McKeldry's fans because they, he, he plays sort of the leading character and he, they, they follow him everywhere. And then, of course, they latch on to you. So I thought, well, thanks, Joe. I've picked up some of your fans. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Now, I just want to say it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. But before we go, is there any messages you'd like to give to anyone who is stuck in hospital at the moment, who's not having the, the greatest of times? At the yes, moment? I have got some friends who are in hospital. And, um, well, I just wish you lots of love and sending you um, a big, big virtual hug and lots of love and God bless. Thank you so much, Kate. It's been an absolute pleasure. Of course, keep safe and uh, hopefully we'll speak again soon. My pleasure, Matthew. Bye, everybody. Stay positive.